Welcome to Watchmen on the Wall, a daily outreach of Southwest Radio Ministries and SWRC.com. God is still on the throne, and prayer changes things. Today, author Mark Henry will conclude his teaching revealing the bold plan of action for godly men. Have you visited our website, SWRC.com? At SWRC.com, you'll find the latest resources, encouraging and informative articles, and a treasure trove of past Watchmen on the Wall programs. And now, when you visit SWRC.com, you can watch our brand new video podcasts. Staff evangelist Josh Davis discovers God's plan for the ages, one Bible verse at a time, on the Moment of Prophecy video podcast. Biblically Grounded, hosted by Clayton Van Hus, visits with biblical archaeologist and Christian apologist to equip us so that you and I can engage the culture. And Marginal Mysteries, hosted by Micah Van Hus. This video podcast examines giants, UFOs, and lost cities. Micah covers the topics your Sunday school teacher didn't talk about. These video podcasts have new episodes released each week. Moment of Prophecy, Biblically Grounded, and Marginal Mysteries. All current and future episodes of these three new video podcasts are available at swrc.com. Let me encourage you, my friends, to check out these brand new video podcasts. Now, here's our host, Dr. Larry Spargimino, with today's guest. We had a great show with Mark Henry, author of The Man Code. He is back with us once again. And friends, by the way, if you missed the previous show, all the shows are archived. It may take a few days to get them archived, but they are there. You can re-listen or listen for the first time. Mark, once again, thank you so much for being back on the show with us. I know you have a very busy schedule. I've been trying to catch up with you, and I finally have done so. <laughs> so praise the Lord. Thank you for being with us once again. Great to be with you, Larry. Well, Mark, can you run through the, uh, the list of 12 essentials with us, and maybe you could sit on a few, two or three as time allows, and uh, whatever you think uh, you want to elaborate on, feel free to do so. Yeah, the 12 start with real men pursue biblical success. That's key, because either we live for the pleasure of God or we don't. So what does the pleasure of God end up looking like? Well, the next 11 describe specifically, in, in a broad sense, 11 areas that every man has to think about. You've got to win, guys, in these 11 areas. And the next one there is uh, real men have focused ambition. There has to be a, a focusness if you're going to be successful and please God. And, and we can see this and illustrate it in, in many ways throughout the Bible, but Nehemiah is a great example. Nehemiah had a great burden for the rebuilding of the walls. And quite honestly, the guy prayed a lot, the guy sacrificed a lot, the guy instituted a lot of things for the glory of God. But in 52 days... He ended up building the walls because of his focused ambition, something that the Jewish people as a nation could not do in 50 years. And that just goes, to, again, to show you how important that focusness and not being distracted. Men, you've got to be focused on what God has called you to and the situation you're in and the, and the phase of life you're in. You've got to be focused in order to honor God. Another one is real men assume responsibility. You know, today people run from responsibility. We're raising a whole generation Larry, that doesn't want to assume responsibility, but real men, they assume responsibility for themselves. They assume responsibility for their families. They assume responsibility for their church. They assume responsibility in the workplace. They assume responsibility. And, and actually, good men not only assume responsibility that's due them, but they also are ready to assume greater responsibility in time of need. I think Boaz is a great example of yes. that. Ruth was in a crisis situation. He didn't have to help this lady. He didn't have to help this widow. But he not only assumed responsibility in helping her, but he went beyond that in caring for her and Naomi. It's a great illustration that biblical success is seen in assuming responsibility. Another one is real men uh, exhibit godly character. You know, the Ten Commandments do not save us. And the Ten Commandments are given to two things. One is to point us to the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Galatians, it's a tutelage, a, a teacher that moves us to believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. But it also becomes a filter. We know the difference between right and wrong through the Ten Commandments as followers of the Lord Jesus. Idolatry is always a sin in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Godly character needs to be demonstrated. If, if, a, if a man can't tell me the Ten Commandments, it's going to be very hard to follow the Ten Commandments as a follower of the Lord Jesus and please God in all of these areas. Another one is they show consideration. Real men demonstrate consideration. They do it in the community. They do it in church. They do it in families. 
it's walking in that sense of understanding where people are at around us, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and meeting those needs and ministering to them. Consideration is something that the world has totally lost. Another one is real men protect others. God has created a system. This is, this is amazing to me, Larry. I have people say to me, I don't need a man. I don't need a man to protect me. I'm just telling you, God is our number one protector. God uses angels to protect us. God uses government to protect us. God uses men to protect us on the family unit side. And it's so important, and you see this over and over again. When we talk about teens in trouble, Larry, man, if you want to have raise your daughter and protect her from some of the evil, having a good and godly husband is one of the key elements to that. Right. You know, there's been studies done. majority of the people in prison are because I'm saying dads. You've got to have dads in there protecting, directing, and leading. Uh, another one is... Real men work with diligence. Proverbs 6 says, go to the ant, O sluggard, observe her ways. It doesn't take someone uh, manipulating and, and orchestrating. Men assume the responsibility of working hard for the glory of God. Colossians talks about how we worship God through our work. Another one is real men respect authority, the authority of the home, the authority of the church, the authority of civil government. In a day and age where we have so much dysfunction, Larry, I always tell people, when you walk into a room, you got to ask the question. I fall into one of three categories, and sometimes I'll jump back and forth. Am I supposed to lead in this situation? Am I the leader? Or am I the follower? Or are we just peers? We're just friends in this situation. And if you don't get that right, you'll never have good and godly relationships. You'll never be able to function at a high capacity. Another one is real men honor their wives. They honor their wives through prayer and through the Word of God and through their deeds and through their affections and through their planning. And they honor their, their wives with their life. I mean, Wives should look back and say, that's my husband, that's, that's my right. man, I just love this guy. You know? and another one is real men train their children. Active, intentional training of children. Not just sitting our kids down and putting them in front of a television and let the television entertain them or a computer or a computer game, but actually teaching them and instructing them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord to teach them to be great lovers of God and followers of God. Another one is real men don't abandon their families. Again, no family left behind, no family Amen. member left behind. And then, of course, real men love the gospel and the church. Well, I love your book because uh, you've got a lot of illustrations. And one of the things that I really enjoyed, you were speaking about life being filled with groovy roads. Uh, you know, roads that grab your tires and pull you in a different direction. Now, where I live out in the country, the roads get very groovy in wet weather, but because of the clay in the soil, the grooves become like concrete when the road dries out. So I think what I get from all of that, we have to be intentional. We have to hold our focus. We don't, we've got to be very careful about drifting in the wrong direction with all of the, the craziness in the newspapers, on the television that we hear even from our government intentionality, focus, sticking to the plan, the battle plan, how to win, what God expects of us is really something that we need to stay on and stay with. Absolutely. That's why the man code, 12 priorities every man needs to know. You got to stay focused. It's like driving down the road. And again, those, those grooves catching you and pulling you one way or another. I, I drive a lot on I-80 across the country. And those big trucks, you know, they've got those grooves in the road. Man, they're <laughs> pulling you all over the place. You got to resist the natural pull and tendency that are around us and keep our eyes focused on Jesus and help our families do that in our churches. Yeah, and I think one of the joy of the local church, certainly in my experience, and also the home and my experience is that we kind of, we work together. You know, no man can, can live alone, work alone. We need, we need ad- admonishment. We need instruction. We need in- encouragement. You know, we're not too neglect the assembling of ourselves together, as is the matter of so many people today. You know, we think we can go it alone, but, but with the family and with all of the principles that you discussed, that will help us. Sometimes it's so easy to drift. Even as a Christian, I read the Bible day and night. I've got this ministry and then a local church ministry. I'm in the Word of God. I've been studying the Word for many, many years, but the pull is very strong. And I really appreciate my family, and I really appreciate uh, my local church. Amen. It's a gift from God. Families are a gift from God. The local church is a gift from God, and they're to be cherished. Well, Mark, we've seen 10-step programs for parenting, marriage, and so forth that flash and then fizzle. Does what you're talking about actually work? How so? What makes it different than a 10-step program? Yeah, 
The difference is this becomes a code by which, for example, my grandsons know the man code. They can give you the man code. If you if you saw them and you looked at Zeke or Eli, they would, and you said, give me the man code. You know, real men assume responsibility. Real men have focused ambition. Real men honor their wives. Real men love the gospel in the church. They would They would give you that list. And then what it allows us to do is to hold one another accountable, men accountable to that to that endeavor. And that's the real difference, Larry. I mean, Bible study things come and go, and, and you know, people, I have people all the time say, you know, I read the Bible through, and that, and that was great and it impacted me, but I really don't remember anything. The problem is, is there's certain things that you and I need to remember so that we can obey them and hold one another accountable on an ongoing basis. And that's the reason we found the man code to be really impactive. Our church, I lead two churches, 412 Church in San Jacinto and Revive Church here in Twin Cities, and those churches are being radically transformed. And then as we're seeing this applied in other churches and men's groups and so forth across the country, what we're discovering is, is this, this was kind of like the missing ingredient. This was, this was the missing piece to the pie, a code by which men could memorize, men could follow, and men could expect from one another. You know, a good Marine looks at one another, and they know the training that you had, and they know what they can expect from one another when they go into battle. And that's what we should be able to do with one another. Well, we're visiting with Mark Henry. He's the author of The Man Code. You can have your own copy of The Man Code by calling 1-800-652-1144. You know, friends, our society has gotten so far off the track, I assure you that The Man Code will be a real blessing, a real time of learning, getting into the Word of God, seeing what God's Word really says. You will be refreshed in your spirit. And by the way, it is also a great book for women. So give us a call. 1-800-652-1144. 1-800-652-1144. Mark, you've, you've mentioned in the previous program, but, but I want to bring it up again. We spoke a little bit about it before, but tell us why the man code is, is the must-read for women as well as for men. Yeah, this is really important, Larry. There are many women looking for a good man, and the question is, what does a good man look like? I had a 21-year-old. She'd been dating this guy for a couple of years. She read the man code. She went to her dad and said, Dad, I, I broke it off with this guy and so forth. And he said, why? And she said, well, he was a good guy, but he's not a man code guy. So for <laughs> young ladies, we're finding that as key. And that's, that's really why we went ahead and made this into a book form, because of, because of my daughter, for that very reason. I wanted her to marry a good man. The second element that I find with ladies is many, many, many ladies are reading this with their daughters so that their daughters know what it is to marry a good man. And many moms are reading it with their, with their sons because they want their sons to be good and godly men. And what I'm finding is that ladies who, who get married, you know, how do you become a cheerleader for your husband? I mean, quite honestly, men should be, I tell men this all the time, you need to be cheerleading the spiritual success of your wife. And likewise, you ladies need to be the cheerleaders for the spiritual success of your husband's. So what is it that you're cheering? Success isn't in nagging. Success is in cheering, right? And so we cheer it when we see our husbands be working with diligence. We, we cheer when men love the gospel in the church. We cheer when men are, are um, training their children. These are the, these are the characteristics that, that ladies really want to experience in their marriages and in their homes and in their life and among their children and grandchildren. Well, we're certainly living in an age of conflict. We see conflict and antagonism between the races. I think that's very unfortunate. I think there are those who are are fanning the flames for their own purposes. But I've also noticed more conflict between the sexes, male and female. I, I remember one incident. I used to live in New York City many, many years ago. That's where I was born. This was about 1976. And I got on the subway to go to downtown Manhattan where the train started. Then about halfway through my trip, I was still sitting. There was a young lady who was very pregnant. She came and she was holding on to a strap hanger right in front of me. Well, like I always did then, and I will always do today, I got up and offered her my seat. Why, she chewed me out and told me up and down that she could stand up as as well as any other man. Well, of course, I left the car. I wasn't going to sit while she was standing. 
But this is so unfortunate. And I think when we have this whole idea of husband, wife, male, female in balance, it really removes the stupid and the silly conflict that's being generated every day between the sexes, between the, the rich and the poor, between the, the various racial and ethnic minorities and majorities and what have you. It's a terrible thing. And I think that's what the enemy wants. It wants to, he wants to divide and conquer our nation. Absolutely, Larry. You know, I, I had that same experience. I remember opening this door for this lady. Uh, I was going into a restaurant, as I recall, and I opened this door and was offered to let her go first. And she started chewing me out. She, she was <laughs> angry with me. How dare you do that? I, I'm a woman. I can open my own door. <laughs> and you know what I did? I, I went ahead and slammed the door right in her face. And the whole reason for doing that was simply to make this point, is we show consideration to others, whether you're a man or a woman. I mean, if you and I were going to the restaurant, I would open the door for you right. just to show you honor and respect. And that's, that's what the Bible calls consideration, showing consideration for others. Larry, I just want to thank you. I know that lady chewed you out. I want to thank you for being a gentleman. I want to thank you for being a godly man and showing consideration to that lady and offering her your seat. That's a good and godly thing. Thank you for doing that. Well, you know, when I, I think of it, I don't think I could dare to be pregnant. Now, of course, men don't have babies. I'm not with that crowd. But, you know, I admire women, all they go through, and uh, wives being home and working so hard. Some have a second job. Sometimes they have two or three little kids, one kid's sick, and so on and so forth. I certainly did not mean anything disrespectful to that, to that young woman. It was, it was a, a thought of honor. I'm really upset at the, you know, the way people jump on everything. I mean, road rage, that's one of the big, Oklahoma's a great state, but we've got a lot of road rage in Oklahoma, and it's very, very shocking. It's very unfortunate. But Mark, how have you used this in your family, in your church? What about the application? I'm also interested in teaching this to young people because young people, so many of them are not well grounded. So many of them are fragile. So, so many of them are coming from church because, well, they have a boyfriend in the church. They're really not part of the church initially. And of course, we want them to come in. We welcome them. That's part of evangelism. And especially applying these principles in your church and to, uh, to teenagers. Tell us a little bit about, about your wisdom and insight. Yeah, so let's, let's start with the family first. So in our family, everybody knows the man code, and everyone, as we're like, maybe we're watching something on television, we'll even point out to one another, hey, that person just broke one of the elements of a man. Good men don't do that. For example, someone cheating on their spouse. You can't hardly watch anything any, anymore on television without seeing, you know, immorality. Right. That's not what real men do. Real men exhibit godly character. And so we pointed out both the negative and the positive, and we reinforce because we teach the man code, we live the man code, and we expect the man code from one another. That's how we use it in our family as a discipleship. Remember, Jesus said, go and make disciples. That means people who are, are, are followers of Jesus, not just converts. It's obviously got to start with, with transformation and regeneration and salvation. But we want people to be more like Jesus in the end, and that's what that, what that element there in the application towards our children and grandchildren. Right. Then the element in the local church is we use the man code all of the time. So our, our, our men's groups have all, have all taught it, of course. We have ongoing elders and stuff that are, that are trained in the man code. We have an ongoing, every so many weeks, men that are new to the church. We want to invite you to join the man code. We just had, I think, two new groups with 40 guys between the two groups just, just get started. God's using that in amazing ways because we want to radically transform their lives and see them transformed and, and see their families transformed. We use it as, as a, a gift to all new families coming in. We come in with baggage into the local church. We're all growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the goal, right? Be more like Jesus. And so right. every eight weeks we have a, a guest luncheon. If you're a guest, we wanted you to come. And we always give those as a gift because, right. because we live in such a confused world, Larry. I mean, we can live in a confused world. Our world doesn't even know what bathrooms you're supposed to use anymore, <laughs> right? Yep. The man code, quite honestly, is just simple biblical wisdom. We would call it common sense or biblical common sense, if you will. And so we use it as standard all the time in that way. Well, fantastic. I think the man code is uh, very, very refreshing. I want to thank you for it and for your ministry. It's a, a great, great blessing. So, Mark, thank you so much. 
I know you're very, very busy. You were hard to follow. Not, I'm not complaining, but I know you've been through a lot of things. May the Lord continue to bless your ministry and bring many the knowledge, the saving knowledge and power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Larry, for having me. The Man Code, 12 Priorities Every Man Needs to Know by Mark Henry is in today's resource spotlight. The Man Code provides a bold plan of action for godly men and a powerful guide for men seeking to embrace their God-given roles as husbands, fathers, and leaders. In a world that desperately needs strong, godly men, Pastor Mark Henry provides a roadmap rooted in Scripture to help men live out their divine calling. This practical resource outlines 12 key action points for biblical masculinity, empowering you to apply God's Word to every area of your life. Order your copy of The Man Code today when you call one 800 652-1144. That's 1-800-652-1144. You can also order on our website, swrc.com. The Man Code, equipping you to serve God with boldness, conviction, and hope. 1-800-652-1144. Our host, Dr. Larry Spargimino, returns now, joined by Josh Davis, to share an insider's preview of the latest Prophetic Observer newsletter, which is out right now. One of the special ministry outreaches of Southwest Radio Ministries for several decades now is the Prophetic Observer. It's a monthly newsletter that arrives in your mailbox free of charge. It's one of these special ministry outreaches that we have to get important truths into people's hands so that they can understand what's going on in the world in light of God's prophetic word. And Pastor Larry typically writes an article, and I will typically write an article. From time to time, we'll feature some other authors in there, but we are excited to bring another edition of the Prophetic Observer into your hands, dear friends. And today, we just want to highlight some of the content that is in the latest issue of the Prophetic Observer from SWRC. Pastor Larry, it's wonderful to be with you again. Thank you so much, Josh. Uh, always, always a delight to be on the show with you. Your latest Prophetic Observer article deals with Marxism. Why don't you highlight some of the content that you have and, and let us know, is, is this just going to be a, a one article or is this something that you're going to come back to and write some more about in the future? Initially, I thought this would be one article, but the more research I do and the more I realize how Marxism is taking over our country, I've come up with a second, so next month it'll be part two. Okay. What are some of the things that you've included in this particular article on Marxism? For the last hundred years or so, Marxism and its ugly descendants infiltrated many countries and regions of the world, and it's had a disastrous effect. It's having a disastrous effect on our country. We need to know that Karl Marx was not a good person. Paul Kengor, a professor at Grove City College, has written a massive tome titled The Devil and Karl Marx, and that's, that's a good title. Of course, there are other books and, and titles that I've looked at. But in 1837, about a decade before he wrote the Communist Manifesto, Marx wrote a poem and he said this, quote, My soul, once true to God, is chosen for hell. Now, those are probably the truest words Marx ever wrote. Marx believed and wrote that the traditional family is a threat to a socialist agenda. According to Marx, families tend to pass along their wealth to their children, thereby perpetuating what Marx considered inequality. And we hear a lot about that. So he didn't like the family. He didn't like husbands and wives, a lot of kids and the family, things that we are very happy about. For Marx, the family was one of the main instruments of oppression. Men oppressed their wives, parents oppressed their kids, and took their kids to church, and God, according to Marx, was the ultimate oppressor. Christians believe that, thus saith the Lord is the final word. For Marx, this was oppression at its worst. He really hated, thus saith the Lord. The biblical command against adultery and the demands of a monogamous relationship do not fit Marx's idea of a happy people. Is it really strange that those who want casual sex would feel very comfortable in a Marxist world? Is that one of the attractions? I believe it is. And let's face it, Marxism is 
very appealing to those who want to redefine marriage in the most absurd way like we're doing. You know, a lot of the things that are leading our country and world in the wrong direction are Marxist to the core. Now, what about all of the social unrest we see in our country? What about the burning of our cities and the Antifa-type protests that have been common? They are Marxist to the core. Marx believed that protest and violence are the way to change the social and economic order. Marx loved the antagonism between the rich and the poor, and he did everything he could to feed the flames of such antagonism. Black Lives Matter has Marxist roots way down. We know that the deep state capitalizes on crises in order to consolidate control. Rahm Emanuel said, never pass up a good crisis. It gives you the opportunity to do what you could not normally do. So when people are afraid, such as in a pandemic, a natural disaster, or an imminent threat of war, people will take orders from the top. America's shadow government is cleverly operating on the principles of Marx to destroy our beloved republic. And I, I think it's so tragic how so many young people, college professors, even some seminary professors, believe it or not, and I wouldn't want to go to that seminary, believe that Marxism is good. I am shocked. That's the problem, one of the main problems we have, people in America who don't know what they're talking about. They sound very smart. They're not very smart. They're very dangerous. So that's kind of what I'm going to be covering. Well, we know that the principles of Marxism are alive and well today. Please contact us today to get on our mailing list if you are not already. You can contact us through swrc.com or by calling us at one 800 652 1144, and you will begin receiving the free Prophetic Observer newsletter every single month. Pastor Larry, it's been wonderful to be with you again. Thank you so much. Enjoy it every time we work together. The Man Code by Mark Henry provides a bold plan of action for godly men and a powerful guide for men seeking to embrace their God-given roles as husbands, fathers, and leaders. This practical resource outlines 12 key action points for biblical masculinity, empowering you to apply God's Word to every area of your life. Order your copy of The Man Code today. Simply call 1-800-652-1144. That's 1-800-652-1144. You can also order on our website, swrc.com. Tomorrow, Donald Perkins will continue his series, Understanding the Book of Revelation. So be sure to tune in by downloading our free SWRC mobile app or by subscribing to our daily Watchman on the Wall podcast. Watchman on the Wall is a production of Southwest Radio Ministries and is supported by faithful listeners like you. Visit swrc.com.